Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, Tim Moinger here from The Man Effect. Really um, looking forward to talking to Stephen Kuhn here, uh, author of Humble Alpha, well, with Lane. How do you say Lane's last name? Balone. Balone. Lane Balone. Lane Balone. Yeah. And uh, Stephen and I, we go back a little bit here and he, he trains um, you know, leaders and all sorts of businesses around the world and uh, just a consultant and a good voice of reason for people. So I'm just really excited to talk um, about this book. A, because uh, I, I just selfishly want to talk about things like this, but B, I think it'd be really um, just fun. So I agree. Um, based around the humble alpha, just like foundationally, I'm kind of curious. I'm going to try to take the perspective of someone who's never heard of you or right. kind of like your agenda. And so I'm just curious, like, what are your values and like kind of your mission that you're trying to achieve with this book? Well, you know, I think if we look at, if we want to break it down to primary and secondary focus, as far as the helicopter view, the primary focus would be like, we're rewriting societal expectations to prove there's a greater man in every man. And when I talk about societal expectations, it's what we as men think or believe or are led to act differently from other people's expectations. So we're going to bust through that. That's what this is all about. Yeah. Secondary focus is when the humble alpha movement succeeds and it will, hundreds of thousands of men will refuse to accept society's rules as they are written. Now, uh -huh. what does that mean? That means, well, you know what it means. I mean, if I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm out in the party or I'm somewhere, I got to be careful what I say, right? People look at you like, I can't believe you just said that. And you might just like this virus thing now, Chinese virus. Huh, you're racist because you said Chinese virus. You know, all these kind of things. We don't pay attention to that. Yeah. But we don't do it in a way of malice. We teach you to do it in a way from, from your, your singular foundation. So meaning everything starts here with you as a leader. So we go through three phases. We find your identity for you first, because a lot of leaders, they identify, you've heard them say it. Do you know who I am? I'm the CEO that I stop. I'm like, I actually know that's what you are. That's not who you are. So who are you really? And most of, most people are, if I ask you who you are, people will be like, uh, yeah, you're right. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. they'll try to fumble their way through. So we start with identity. And when you find your identity, suddenly things show up in your life or you see things differently. So your purpose almost crystallizes in front of you. Mm -hmm. And once you have your purpose, your purpose amplifies your identity to make you who you really are. It shows the world who you really are. And that creates the magic, what I call certainty. Now, certainty sounds like an easy word, but what certainty does in life and business is it allows you to detach from, learn, from, from wondering how you're going to get to where you're going to go. Because mm -hmm. A, you're coming from a moral basis of what we call HIT, honesty, integrity, transparency. B, you know your identity. C, you know your uh, purpose. So you don't have to worry about anybody else's expectations because every step you take is leading you down your path where you're supposed to go according to your amplified identity. Yeah. And so therefore, you don't have to worry about what anybody thinks because you always come from a place of purity and honesty. Yeah. So that's pretty much the book. <laughs> yeah, so you're like... What I hear you saying is it's like more working on core issues than superficial issues that people focus on in regards right. to masculinity and men's, men's issues. Um, yeah. It's like, it's not, not a bravado. It's a core. Yeah. It's all outside. Value. It's all outside. I mean, you know, what we say, a humble, we, we have a humble alpha credo manifesto and some of the things are like, how do you dominate a room <clears throat> without saying a word? You know, mm -hmm. things, things like that, how we, how you walk into a room and you just own it. And how do you own a room when you don't say a word? People are like, how it's impossible. Well, things obviously contribute to it. <clears throat> how you dress, how you look, that kind of thing, right? So you have to present yeah. yourself accordingly. You have to meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. So until someone knows you, you have to be familiar to them, mm -hmm. right? So when I walk up to Bill Clinton, which I've done, I couldn't go up there in a you know, disgruntled veteran T-shirt, you know, FTA or whatever, you know, and say, hey, what's up, Willie boy? You know, I couldn't say something like that. <laughs> but if I walk up to him in a suit and tie and say, hey, William Jefferson Clinton, how are you doing today? He's most certainly going to talk to me. Yeah. So that's the first step is, is owning a room. Uh, you have to look like the room. So people have to realize that you're actually one of them. Yeah. And second of all is when, you're, when you own your presence through knowing your identity and your purpose, people feel it. People feel it. I mean, I actually met Bill Clinton. I was standing in a, in a hotel sort of room, not a hotel room, but a hotel ballroom or whatever. Conference room and I was talking room. to somebody and I felt this presence behind me. I was like, holy shit, who's that? I'm like, mm -hmm. I just felt it. Turned around. There he was. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's where that was back in 90, 
94, I think it was. Was that Bush? I met them both. I can't remember which one it was. No, in 94, it must have been Clinton because he came to Berlin where I was. Mm. And uh, that, that's sort of like, wow, how does he do that? And that's where I started, you know, following and looking and searching. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> I could go on a lot about that. but um, We should yeah. because it's, it's important. Because what happens when you walk into a room? The first thing people do, what do they do? You know, they walk into a room and they go, oh, my God. And then what do they do? They do this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, okay, I, I look like I'm busy because I, I feel uncomfortable. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know anybody. I have a pocket full of business cards and I feel like passing them out. I want to talk at people instead of with people. Um, you know, we go through the whole process. For instance, when someone asks you, hey, what do you do? You know, most people say, well, I have this and that and that. It's a family business and we've been around for 80 years. And da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. You're talking at the person. The guy's looking over your shoulder going, I wonder where I can get a cocktail or whatever. You know, it's just, it's just not interesting. So there's something that Donald Miller from Brand Story suggests, and I use this all the time. It's called PPR, Problem Product Resolution. Yeah. So yep. you ask, right? You know it, right? Mm-hmm. So you ask, you ask a question. Well, you know problem X, Y, Z, and the guy would go, yeah, I know it. And then you say, well, we have a product that does X, Y, Z, and the outcome is this. And you're done in 10 seconds. Told your whole story. Mm-hmm. And then you just shut up and listen. A humble alpha listens, doesn't talk. Seeks mm-hmm. solutions, right? And has zero expectations unless they're verbalized. Mm-hmm. And why is that? Because we only can control the intention, not the expectation, not the outcome. Yeah. We can't control the outcome. We can only control the intention. So we focus on the things that we can control. Yeah. I, I take a, a different angle in one of my articles on, on confidence of just saying how like a man of confidence doesn't need to be hurt. Like he doesn't have this insatiable desire to just talk someone's ear off and to right. create validation. He can sit there quietly, be comfortable in, in his own being. And when yeah, you're, needs to be you're one of those guys. I mean, when, when you were here, sometimes the pauses between my statement and your answer were like a minute and a half or two minutes. I'm like, wow, this guy's really thinking, man. <laughs> no, it was good because you're so used to a, a conversation sort of building up, heated up. And you were just nice and calm. It was great. It was great. Yeah. It's, I think it's just essential um, because like if you want to fill a room, like you, you have to carry that internally. And it'll, it'll fill that, that space. Um, and people see the external versus the internal. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the external brash, sort of, hey, everybody, hey, John, uh, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it's a, <laughs> people are like, okay, you know, Steve's here or whoever, you know. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> it, you know, it, it makes me think about this one time. I was in a coffee shop at a business meeting, right? And my, my client, I had introduced him to a uh, uh, business broker, and they were just talking for forever. I was bored out of my mind. I saw this beautiful woman walk in and I was like, I want to talk to her. And so like I, I get up because they're just talking forever. I go up to her and I start talking to her and um, then I have to go back to the meeting and I come back a little bit later and get her number and stuff. And we're on the date later and I'm just like, did you realize how you didn't feel awkward or you didn't feel pressure or all this? And she's like, yeah, now that you say it, yeah, that's why we're like here, right? And I was like, yeah, because I have an internal setting where I'm good and that's just how I carry myself in, in the, and that's like a really superficial kind of example. No, but it's important it's because most, most guys can't do that. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's another thing that I promised you, you didn't have, and that was expectations. Yep. Yeah. Like you exactly. didn't care one way or the other, right? Yeah, exactly. You didn't care yeah. because your intention was all that mattered. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So when you have an expectation, they feel it immediately. Oh, this guy wants something. What's he, what's he, it feels uncomfortable. It's like you're squishing exactly. them or pushing them or, you know, jamming them into a corner. So when your presence, when you own your presence, who you are, your identity, and you have no expectations when you talk to people. I mean, I can go up to a guy. I'm like, dude, you look amazing, man. <laughs> yeah, you know? I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, 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 and you know, my grandfather <laughs> back way back when, before he died, he said, be that person that finds good in everybody. You know, and, and tell them, even if they're strangers, just tell them because no one else will. Yeah. Right. That's and I mean, ima- imagine sitting there like, I mean, I could, I was in the doctor's office a couple of weeks ago and this guy walked by wearing this amazing jacket, his cufflinks were perfect. I was like, wow, sharp. Mm-hmm. And he was he lit up. He's like, well, well thank you. Who, uh, who are you? And, uh, you know, I like completely shocked that someone would say that. Mm-hmm. Well, he dresses that way for a reason because he has, a, you know, a sort of a self pride, I guess you could say when it comes to how he dresses. And I just acknowledge that. But I mm-hmm. honestly thought it looked really good. So you yeah. only say words that are honest. You don't yeah. just do it to make nice hair. You know, that kind of thing. You don't do that. So, <laughs> yeah. 
can't say that to me. I'm, I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got some hair. Just, yeah. just, just slid down your head. <laughs> yeah, gravity one. Uh, it's a it's a bit untamed right now. Um, so, like, I'm curious about a little bit of the backstory behind you and Lane, like getting together and being like, yeah. hey, this is something we need to actually put the time in to make tangible for a long, yeah. long period of time. It's the legacy that you guys are creating, and so I'm curious right. the motivation behind that. Uh, well, Lane and I both um, were in the military, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, Lane was in 12 years, I was in eight years. He was in special forces, I wasn't. <laughs> so I was in tanks. We were both in yeah. combat. I was in Iraq. Lane was in a bunch of places he can't talk about. Um, and uh, about two years ago, I had a tribe on Facebook, or I still do, called Vetpreneur, Veteran Entrepreneurs. So it's, right now it's 14,000 veterans who are entrepreneurs that I sort of mentor and coach, and we have you know, sub-teams and things like that. And Lane joined um, out of the blue. And at the time, I was doing um, getting ready to go to Peru for one of my annual journeys where we work with sacred plant medicine, ayahuasca and San Pedro. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not getting high and trips and things. We, we literally do it using the same thing. You know, we identity, purpose, certainty. We use the plants in order to, create, to, to uncover that. And he, he said, I want to go. So he went, we met, we, uh, we went through the whole 10 days together. And when we left, we became partners because we yeah. just, you know, gelled together. And then the question was, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to partner in? You know? And um, through the time, it just came out that we were both very, um, I don't want to say deep thinkers, but we dig deep. Like we want to find the root. Why do you think like you think? Why do we do what we do? What's the reaction? Why, where's that reaction come from when we react? Yeah. There's a core to every single one of these. And at the time, I had hit very solidified. So honesty, integrity, transparency, that's where the nickname came from, the hit man. And he, he latched on and I said, man, this is amazing. And then we said, we need to write a hit book. Hmm. So we started writing this hit book. And the funny thing about it was we started uncovering more acronyms. <laughs> the army loves acronyms. Yeah. And then we started talking about where these come from and why, you know, like we, we looked at our highs and our lows and how we went mm-hmm. from high to low and back to high again. And what was, what were the exact actions and the attitudes and the psychological sort of um, lines of no return that we crossed? Mm-hmm. You know, and so we started writing this all down and it turned into this fabulous book that just... We have five proprietary models we use. One of them is HIT, of course. Mm-hmm. And they all, all these five proprietary models come from our lives, from the, the hardships that we had, from the triumphs we had, relationships we had. Um, and it's, it's a fantastic book. So it's all proprietary. Nothing's regurgitated. It's all new. And, it's, and every chapter has stories about both of us, about mm-hmm. how we overcame. So it's a story, a lesson, action steps. A story, mm-hmm. a lesson, action steps. So it's a real, it's a book that you take, you read, and you can make it happen. And for those, it's called Unleash Your Humble Alpha. And for those who say they want more, they can join our program, which is a year long program where we take you through step by step in person, sorry, like this virtual one on one or in a a group setting, uh, and take you through these steps. And the cool thing about it is you start with yourself, then you move to your team. Hmm. A litmus test for those who are like, I don't need this. This is bullshit. You know, that kind of stuff. A litmus test is real simple. Um, if you're a leader and you have a company, would, if your wife was a fly on the wall in the office, right, uh, would she recognize you? Number one. Number two, if one of your employees was a fly on the wall in your house, would you be embarrassed? <laughs> right? So, oh, you're not so, so much the leader at home, are you? So these are the kind of things that we're working on with men. Right now, this is for men. But funny enough, and on, an, on, on average, about, you know, a little bit more than 50% of our questions and buyers are women. And so we're going to do a live with women. Yeah, they, 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 this, is like, this is how I want to raise my son. This is the kind of man I want. Yeah, That's exactly. Crazy. And we, we didn't even think about that when we were doing this. Yeah. So it was, it was shocking to say, wow, we really touched a nerve. Hmm. And one of the women said to us, this is like you're repairing the Me Too movement. This hmm. is like you guys going out and saying, we're going to own this now. and We're going to fix this. I was like, you saw that in that book? You know, I was like, wow, that's amazing. So we, we, we definitely hit a nerve. Uh, we just got to get the word out. That's all. Yeah. It was, we're so blessed, man. I mean, to be able to live your life and then write it out and then have people buy it. That's crazy. <laughs> that's humbling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Completely. That's yeah. So that's good to hear that you're helping people with their frame and being consistent yeah. with that. That's 
Well, really you know, let, let's just look. I mean, you're, I don't, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to tell you this. I know you personally, you came here, we spent a week together. We travel, you know, three or four different countries, three, I think. And um, you're the same person in every setting. Mm -hmm. And most people think they are, but they're not. Even people that I know that I work with, when someone, a third party shows up where they either want something from them or they could see a benefit, they're different immediately. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why are you acting different? You know? yeah. Because that, that expectation is there and that changes their intention, doesn't it? Their intention yeah. is now, I want oh, something. Absolutely. And everyone feels it. So when you realize that once you start wanting something, it plays a role in your communication, in your energy, and how other people will perceive you. Yeah. So you want to stay away from that and stay present with who you are. And you own that in every situation, no matter what. I don't care who's in front of me. If I don't agree, I'm going to say it in a nice way. I don't agree. I yeah. don't care if it was if, if I had a boss back in the day. Actually, my bosses, I drove them crazy. Um, <laughs> they weren't my bosses. They were my contractors, you know. Yeah. Um, I drove them crazy. I'm like, you, you brought me in to fix this, so let me fix it. You know, let's do it this way. Um, this is why. Here's the answer. This is what's going to happen. This is the outcome. PPR, right? And, uh, mm. and they'd be like, oh, just do it. And I always, almost always, came out on top. So they would, they would tolerate my sort of strong headedness, which wasn't arrogant. That's why they tolerated it because it was just me being me. Yeah. And then of course I'd, you know, win, make profit or whatever, I, whatever I had to do. So it always came through and that's where I practiced all these years. We also talk in the book about how do you lead a team? How do you get a team to go from where, cause you know, if you're a leader, you have a team, you've been around for 10 years, your team's been around for five or six or seven years. How do you suddenly go in and be this alpha, this humble alpha, right? Yeah. How? Well, we teach you how. And it has yeah. to do with some physical stuff. It has to do with some structural things. And it has to do, of course, with yourself. And so this oh, wow. book is super exciting for, for, for those who think, I can't just suddenly be a different person. Well, you're yeah. not. You're just, you're just peeling away all the fakeness, all, yeah. of, the, all of the insecurities. Because most people hide behind these titles. You know, that's their structure. That's yeah, a perfect example of soldiers, Marines. Mm. You know, you, you, you hear it all the time. Like, I'm a Marine. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an Army. I'm a soldier. Uh, you know, an Airman. Mm -hmm. And that's because they have never found a new identity, which they can feel so fulfilled by. Mm -hmm. And they stick behind that. And, you know, all the way 20, 30 years. I mean, I've been out for 26 years now. And I still think of it every day, but it's not who I am. I don't go around saying we're Army. The only reason we have on the book cover, we have real small under our names, Combat Veteran, Bronze Star. Because all the marketing companies said, you have to you know, mention the military. You have to. You have to. Otherwise, we wouldn't even have mentioned it, except for in the mm -hmm. stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're marketing to that sort of thing, but I think it's going to be great because if other veterans read it, they're going to be like, these guys don't act like veterans. These guys don't, are going to tough, rough and tumble veteran guys, you know, mm. which is great, which is great. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's a, um, Oh, that makes me think about recently. Someone was asking how, how can I come up with interesting facts about myself? And, um, like when it, for conversations, right. And I mm -hmm. was, and I was telling them, I was like, Think about how people perceive you. So like if you're a veteran, how people instantly perceive you. Think about that. And now think of how to break that perception of, of you. Yeah. Good idea. Great and, idea. And that's a great way to come up with fun facts about yourself. And that's, so like, that's a great idea. I remember when I was in the corporate world, I'd get sent around all over the world. Uh -huh. Europe, mostly Europe, sometimes America. And I'd, well, I'd never tell them what I did or, you know, I just yeah. did the job. And then maybe six weeks later, maybe a, six months or whatever later, Someone would find out that I was a soldier in a war. I wrote a book, this kind of stuff. And then suddenly the way they reacted to me changed. Mm -hmm. You know, the way they interacted with me, sorry, yeah. changed. I'm like, you were in a war? I'm like, God, really? Wow. Are you okay? You know, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. you know, suddenly, <laughs> or people were scared. Suddenly, I actually had a CEO who I worked with for over 15 years. When he found out, he's like, you have PTSD, I can tell. <laughs> you know, like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I mean, I do, but he didn't know what PTSD was until, until he found out I went to war and then read about it. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. just, so, you know, and it's normal to be that way. It's funny yeah. people who are, um, let's say with themselves, uh, or, or secure in who they are. It's funny to see that, but the humble alpha doesn't, you know, they, he, they, they help lead people to that place as well. Mm -hmm. So like when you came here, we talked a lot about that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. We, we really let it out. We like, no holds barred in a way that was productive. So it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't destructive. And so that's how, that's what a humble alpha does. Love it. So for anyone who's watching, um, what are like some, like, what would be the uh, uh, objections or like um, things, hurdles for them to overcome to 
opening the book and actually not just reading it, but actually like doing the exercises. And, and exercises. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you have to want to, right? You know, yeah. people, there's a saying I heard, I don't remember who said it, but people always want to change the world around them without changing themselves. And that's impossible. You know, it's, mm. it's literally impossible. So if you want change in your world, you have to change yourself. At yeah. least adapt or be aware or see, see what you can do differently. Um, I think the biggest hurdle is wanting to do it and actually take an action. You know, every, today you're bombarded with things that you buy online, clickbait, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, first of all, the way we, we want to draw people in is also because this is a book of helping. Yeah. And we have a strategic philanthropy book launch going on right now. It's a crowdsourcing campaign, which means when you go to our website, it's a crowdsourcing website. Every book you buy feeds three children for mm -hmm. an organization called Generosity Feeds. It's America, every sixth child goes to school hungry. Now they're not going to school. So there's probably more kids hungry because the, the, there's a lot of parents in America complaining yeah. the kid, the school used to feed my kids and now they're not feeding my kids anymore. I can't afford this. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit, it's a big deal. So now this, 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 uh, um, and generosity feeds is really getting overloaded with, uh, you know, with people wanting to get wanting help. So yeah. our books helping them feed people. Now you have different levels. So you can buy a book, a, a signed book, a special edition hard copy book. You can buy 12 books and a, and a VIP session with me and Lane. You can buy 24 mm. bucks and a personal visit with us. We'll fly to your place and, you know, yeah. if we can ever fly again, you know. Right. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and uh, I mean, I don't know. I feel, I feel um, uh, sort of detached because I'm in Europe. I know you're in Europe too. So yeah. uh, it feels sort of detached from what's going on over here. Over there. It seems calmer somehow over here. So much calmer here. Yeah. yeah, people are just dealing with it. You know, maybe, maybe it's because of the old East Block structure. They're they're still used to being, you know, having that sort of heavy-handed government telling you what to do. So, you know, yeah, could be that. I think it's also someone I was just talking to back in the states um, about this whole epidemic was that they were like, you know, usually stuff like this happens, but not in the U.S. And yeah. so that I think uh, U.S. is a little bit of a big snowflake in some yeah. senses. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> big snowflake. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it, it's true. It's you know, it's always happened somewhere else, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. War always happens somewhere else. You know, mm -hmm. epidemics happen somewhere else. You're right. Good point. Yes. So I'm living in a country that's been bombed and changed yeah. empires tons of times, and they're much more uh, Here durable. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, I really appreciate you uh, taking time. I, I always love talking to you. I'm gonna definitely link uh, it below information for people to uh, touch base and get access. Um, are there specific ways that people can find you as well um, that you would recommend to follow just content that you're creating and sure. all of that as well? Yeah, sure. I, I do a daily video called the daily purge. Um, mm -hmm. I'm think I'm think I'm on episode 379 today. Um, and so 379 days, not weekends, but 379 days of doing a daily purge. And literally it's just what's on my, on my brain. I just purge it. Yeah. <laughs> so some, sometimes it's, it's, it's recent current events. Sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes it's business, sometimes it's spiritual, sometimes it's mindset, you know, sometimes it's fitness, who knows. And, um, so that's, that's on my page, Stephen Kuhn official on, um, on Facebook. You can put the link down there as well. That's Stephen with a V K U H N official on Facebook. My personal page is full, so I have, I'm at max out of 5,000. Uh, Instagram, I post the videos, but I don't really do anything there. You know, I probably should. <laughs> I got like 3,000. I had 15,000 followers, and um, um, people keep using my picture in my profile, uh, and I found 11 fake profiles with my pictures on it on one day. Yeah. What? Yeah. So I reported them to Instagram, and they, they deleted my profile with 15,000 followers. <laughs> oh, my God. So yeah, I just had a call the other day from the fourth woman who got scammed out of $10,000 from a guy on Google chats or whatever you call it. I don't know what, I don't use it, who uh, uses my name, my videos, my pictures, kids, my pictures of my kids to scam these women, the fourth woman. I'm sure it's the same guy. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's scary. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Stephen Cohn official. Sorry to get off track there. Yeah. Um, you know, our, I'll our, link my, it all. My, my, my personal website is stephen coon.com. That's where you can see if you want to book me for speaking gigs or for some training or something. Otherwise, yeah. my um, art, you know, the, the, the address, the web address with Lane and I is called QOL Enterprises. And QOL is something that I tagged when I first started doing live videos two years ago. Because at the end of every, every live video, I always go, and remember, it's all about quality of life. You know, mm -hmm. I, so we, we started calling it QOL, hashtag QOL. So we just called our company QOL Enterprises. 
Oh, wow. And uh, so that's where we're going along. And yeah, you know, Lane and I, we have a plan, a trip planned in May for Peru. It looks like that's not going to happen. Um, yeah. So we, we always go with 10 business leaders. It's, it's quite inexpensive to go there. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's an eight-day journey where we go through identity, purpose, and certainty. We visit Machu Picchu, Pisac, Olo and Tombiando, the markets. And we have uh, three um, uh, plant medicine sessions with uh, – yeah. San Pedro and one, I and go. one with ayahuasca. No. Yeah, you should go, man. It's amazing. It's amazing. It changes your life forever. I love it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just taking a couple notes here. Um, sure thing, brother. That's great. All right. Well, um, I just said, um, I hate it when I do that. Uh, I'm, I'm just grateful for that. You're creating good content that's out there to help men. That's why I was just uh, pumped to create yeah. space for this. And yeah. I, I hope that uh, as the future unravels, that there is a good traction for you and, and this book. So, well, for those who have lists, they should contact me um, on Facebook because we have a referral program. Uh, so, oh, if yeah. you we have for referral, you know, we have prizes too. So, the first prize is a trip to Hawaii with us. Yeah, um, for, the, for the humble alpha retreat, um, and that's the first prize for those who get the most people, most opt-ins, right? Yeah. Um, and then there's other prizes too, like free books and uh, one-on-ones and things like that. So for those who have big lists, that's a good thing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Check out the information below and um, let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to assist you. So and thank you so much, Stephen, for tuning Thanks in. Thanks for having well. me, my brother. Thanks yeah, for having man. me.